Okay, I got it now. All right. Good morning. Welcome to the Explore Communications and Media Career Chat Field uh, with employers and uh, alumni. My name is John Wetzel, and I am a career counselor in CLA Career Services. I use pronouns he, his, and him, and I will be moderating our session today. The goal of this session is to explore the industry of communications and media and to connect with employers and alumni who are in this field. The session is part of a series of student prep events for the CLA Internship and Career Fair, which will be held tomorrow, Wednesday the 29th, between 10 and 3. Panelists will speak from their personal career journey, as well as offer suggestions on how to prepare for this industry. Uh, we are dealing with a very, very broad industry, communications and media. And I want to thank you today, the panelists, for joining us. So I'm going to ask Jack to introduce himself first. Hey, I'm Jack. I uh, work at Irish Titan. I'm the marketing manager over here. Um, glad to be on the panel today. Good to see everybody. And your background, education background, Jack? Yeah, so I have a individualized studies major. It's really a, a small group, but a super exciting group. Um, so I majored in individualized studies, focus areas in um, advertising, design, and photography. Excellent. Jack, thank you so much for joining us. Marguerite, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Absolutely. Thank you, John. Hello, I'm Marguerite Winter. I do human resources at Broadhead. Uh, Broadhead is a full service advertising, um, communications, public relations, marketing agency in downtown Minneapolis. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk more about everything I do and what we do uh, later on. Um, I'm a University of Minnesota alum, super proud gopher. Um, I graduated from the Carlson School in 2015. So I was over on the West Bank, wrong side, but please uh, don't hold that against me. There's no right or wrong side. There's the left <laughs> bank and the right bank. <laughs> Thank you, Marguerite. Garrett. Sure, happy to. My name is Garrett Zafke, and I work for Dakota County. If you do not know where Dakota County is at, we are just south of the river of uh, the U of M in Hennepin County. We're the third largest county in terms of population in the state of Minnesota. I work um, in communications for the county, um, which is very broad, general. Um, we do lots of stuff in the county um, for that. I did not go to the U of M. I graduated from the University of Northwestern St. Paul. Um, so still in the local area though, um, and my uh, degree was communications and electronic media broadcasting. Excellent. Thank you, Garrett, for being with us. Connor. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Connor McCarthy. Um, I work for an advertising agency called Merkle. It's about a 10,000 person agency that folds underneath Dentsu Aegis Network. I'm an account director there uh, working on the CRM side. So a lot of database marketing. We do database builds. We do MarTech uh, consulting, advanced analytics, uh, paid media, et cetera. Um, I am a proud journalism alum from the University of Minnesota. I've worked very closely with John and Beth for, for four, four years there in uh, career services. So happy to be back. Excellent. Thank you very much, Connor. Okay, let's get right to the point. Um, so what are some key things that you think define the career field of communications and media and those who are interested in it? I'm going to go with Marguerite first, please. Yeah. I think it's in the title of our session today, communications. You choosing to enter a career in this field, I think you've got to be interested and passionate about and good at communicating in all forms, um, written, verbal, um, art. It's really about how do we communicate with audiences, with individuals. It's if you if that gets you excited and that's something that you're all about, um, I think that's what will lead you to be successful in a career in this industry. Excellent, thank you, Marguerite. Jack, would you like to add something? Yeah, I completely agree. With that. I think communication uh, as a skill is super important, but it also is you know something that we do a ton of. Um, adopting different kinds of voices is super important, at least for my role. Um, so speaking from the voice of our, our company itself, but also speaking as like an HR representative, that kind of thing. Um, having different kinds of voices that you can kind of put your 
uh, different hats on is super important to us. Um, yeah, I think the other thing is like being flexible with a little bit of uncertainty, like our roles tend to um, jump into different aspects or, you know, it is that, that wide ranging um, skill set. So I think having the ability to be flexible with different kinds of uh, tasks on a daily basis, our days tend to not look completely the same every day. And that's the exciting thing that I love about it. Um, but being able to be flexible with that is super important. Excellent. Garrett, your thoughts about the communications area in the career field? Yeah, I mean, I would second a lot of what's already been said, um, especially in terms of the flexibility. I think what's really interesting about this field is that you can do a lot with this. I mean, communications is something that's a platform and a foundation for many organizations across the board, whether that's business, government, you know, you name it, communications is something that needs to be there. So I think it's really neat that we can be flexible in terms of what you're maybe looking for in a job. Um, but also just being adaptable as well and kind of changing through things. I think just going through COVID-19 and kind of all of that, that threw it at us. I think as communication professionals, we just saw that adaptability and flexibility were like two things that really stood out um, to really kind of help people weather that storm. And I think as communication professionals, that's something that we already have in our back pocket a little bit since it is such a broad um, and defined area. It's just nice to be able to kind of have that um, that strength and that you can really kind of utilize that wherever. Um, just even looking at, you know, you check the news or anything like that. A lot of things that people get in trouble for is because they don't communicate effectively or they communicate poorly. And so um, we're able to hopefully kind of step in and help people um, understand that not everyone's a really great communicator and that's okay. Um, and there are, you know, those of us who are a little more comfortable in that and we can kind of pass on some of those secret skills to them. Excellent. Thank you, Connor. Something you'd like to add? Yeah, I'll speak um, specifically from kind of the advertising angle. As everybody said, this is a very broad uh, kind of depth of where you can go. Um, but from advertising, it's really a spot where kind of the creativity and business collide. So that's what's really what interests me in going into this industry, right? Um, it's become kind of a cliche, but storytelling is a huge deal, not only for mm -hmm. um, our customers and when we're trying to sell things, but also for our clients when we're saying, hey, what's the return on investment for the work that we're doing? How do we actually tell that story? How do we have that narrative that flows through all the way to executives and the team that we're working with? So I think it's just a, it's a really nice sweet spot for those that like to kind of dabble in, you know, creative work, but then also have the business background as well. Excellent. Thank you very much, Connor. Jack, uh, next question. Uh, why are you interested in this field and how were you introduced to it? Yeah, Connor's comment segues nicely because I got interested in this because of the creative aspect. So I um, have a background in photography. I wanted to do something with photography in college. I, I loved taking photography classes, but I knew that I didn't just want to be a photographer after school. So I, I knew that I wanted to do a couple other things or um, kind of meet that business and creativity uh, angle. And so I found an individualized studies major, which I thought was a good fit for me. It, it combined different things that I was interested in. And I actually took an advertising class, um, I think it was sophomore year, and just sort of fell in love with that process and with the um, classes that I was taking and the you know area. And so, um, I sort of fell into it, but I, I kind of knew I loved that creative piece and the business piece sort of fell into place nicely. Um, yeah, and so I think that was a good fit for me and that's sort of how I landed into it. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> okay, Marguerite, um, do you care to comment on what got you interested in this. Marguerite, you're- so It was actually um, my involvement in a student organization group at the University of Minnesota that got me interested and involved in this career field. Um, there are so many student orgs within CLA and the university as a whole that you can join that will absolutely help you get into this industry. Um, one of the organizations I was in ended up taking a kind of field trip visit day to Broadhead where we could do a site tour and meet people at the company and learn about careers there. 
And I just remember walking off the elevator that day in the office downtown and just getting this great first impression and this immediate feeling that I would fit in here and I feel like I could do a really good job here. So it was because of that org that I got introduced to this. I got excited about it, started following the company online and eventually found my internship here, which led to a job for me. So I highly recommend getting involved in student organizations at the U um, that can help you figure out different career paths for after college. And we'll put a plug in for employer site visits, right? Extremely. It it is the best way to learn like where I'm actually going to see myself once I leave school. Excellent. Connor, your thoughts about how do you how you got interested in your field? Yeah, I grew up my my dad was a marketing director. So I, I kind of was around marketing all my life, everything from traditional campaigns to, to you know, to digital media, etc. And so um, as I started out in college, I started interning at uh, Crayola out in Pennsylvania. That was my first internship on the client side, and I did another client side uh, internship with 3M, and then I had a couple agency internships. One was study abroad with Havas Worldwide, which was an agency out in Australia, and then another internship was with McGarry Bowen, which was an agency in New York City. Um, and so that really obviously sparked my interest into going on the agency side and actually servicing clients there. Um, so really, again, the creativity involved with it, working with creative groups, but then also strategists with analysts and being kind of that centerpiece in the account role that's able to tie all these, those pieces together, be kind of a jack of all trades, if you will, and touch everything. Mm -hmm. um, that's what really grew my interest in, in the agency side and, and specifically in like account management. Garrett, your thoughts as sp specifically as it relates to government. Yeah, you know, I uh, did not ever imagine myself being in government. That was something that was never on my radar. Um, I actually went to school wanting to be um, more in the broadcast area. So we're talking like TV news, something like that. Um, but just kind of then sat down after college and really asked myself, what did I really want out of my job? And kind of looked at, you know, what was I looking for in terms of pay, in terms of, you know, hours, in terms of when I would be working, um, well, what days I'd be working, you know, I kind of listed out everything being like, what do I really want in that? Um, and then through that, I kind of then started looking for my career choice based on, you know, what those were. And I didn't really tack it on to just, hey, I want to make X amount of money and I'm going to find that or I'm going to run over X amount of hours and find that. I kind of took everything together, packaged and kind of asked myself, where am I going to find that? Um, and, you know, a little bit of luck, a little bit of stuff, just kind of stumbling backwards into it being like, hey, local government is actually a really pretty sweet job, pretty good gig. Um, they need communicators. They need, you know, people who are really good about understanding the facts and giving them out to people. So I've kind of found my way here, but I would just say, do your research, you know, ask yourself those deep questions. I didn't jump into this right out of school. I definitely took a couple of jobs working at, um, you know, the local Caribou Coffee and learned how to make a pretty awesome espresso. So that's, you know, a life skill that I learned as well, but you know, it's okay if you don't jump right into something right out of college. It's like if you want to give yourself some time to think about what I want to do, where do I want to really aim myself, that's an okay path to take. I've also uh, worked a lot with our interns here at Dakota County. And there are some people who literally leave from school right into the job that they're going to have the rest of their life. And that is also a great path. If you know that that's the path you want to take, I just know that some of us are not always defined with that and that's okay. And I know I've talked to interns who are super concerned because they don't have that defined one door opens, one door closes um, moment in their life. And they think that their life is gonna be derailed for the rest of it. It's like, no, that's fine. Like what's great about communications is that once again, we're flexible and adaptable. There are a lot of ways that we can utilize our skills in many different industries and find yourself a really good job. And Garrett, you actually uh, anticipated the next question, and that is, uh, what are ways that students can experience, uh, gain experience to prepare for this industry? So you've answered that one. Uh, Jack, your thoughts about how would you advise today's students to prepare for this communications and media field? I think students now have a much better sense of communications and media already, you know, with social media or with... Um, the ability to communicate effectively. Um, I think my suggestion for students now would be, I loved the pieces in college that I did. And so I, I'd suggest the same things to students now. I think um, getting involved in student groups is a big one for sure. That's a great way to um, experience different people, experience different ways, different roles of communication, but also, um, 
I worked at, uh, it's now called Backpack. It was SEAL agency before, um, but Backpack was an internal communications agency at the University of Minnesota uh, that you work at. It's not a, um, like a club or anything like that. They have external and internal clients at the U. It's an awesome group. I would totally suggest that to anyone that's looking for an interest in communications and media. Um, but groups are another great way to do that for sure. So Jack, would that be a paid position? Yeah, these were paid jobs. I think um, I'd have to check the hours again, but I think I was working like anywhere between 10 to 20 hours. Um, opportunities for advancement. I became a, a creative director there. Um, it's a great organization. It operates just like Broadhead or just like, uh, you know, a agency would in, um, in the University of Minnesota. Excellent. Thank you very much. Marguerite, anything you'd like to add? I know you've already talked about uh, the employer site visits and things of that type. Yeah, I think taking advantage of the CLA Career Services Office is an excellent thing you should do during your time as a student. I mean, there are people like John and Beth working there where it is their full-time job to make sure that they are connecting you with resources and with people because they want you to be successful. Um, I think that there are thousands of students and you know, only so many of them actually take full advantage of that resource available to them. So introduce yourself, show up there. I'd go at least once a semester. Um, just you've got this resource available to you, make it work for you. Thank you very much. Connor, you are very, very familiar with career services, having worked yeah. there, but also having traveled abroad. Uh, thoughts about preparation for today's students? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm. you can probably tell from my background, internships is, is the biggest thing for me. Um, I know those can be challenging to get. I know some are unpaid, I know some are paid, and I, I understand that that's a, a tricky area, but um, I can't preach enough how much those help me actually understand what I liked about certain organizations, what I didn't like, what I liked about cultures, what I didn't like, um, and then actually getting my hands on things and having a portfolio built, right? So when I went into interviews, I could actually show, instead of just talking about it, I could show, hey, here's what I actually worked on, here's what I touched, and here's what I did there. Um, as we're hiring right now, and a lot of, a lot of agencies are, are hiring uh, kind of madly because of the, the great resignation, um, but as we're hiring right now, that's stuff that I specifically look for. If I'm looking at an account coordinator, I, I want to know what the actual things are that they did in their previous roles, uh, whether it was at an agency or at some other job that they had, and what were the, the action items that they took and the results that came of it, right? So um, internships, I can't, can't preach enough how, how important those are uh, for gaining that experience. And uh, Beth just put a wonderful chat, a note, note in the chat about internship scholarships that we make available for students who take unpaid internships. And that, in fact, that was my first introduction to the University of Minnesota in Career Services is being on a committee to try and increase internships for students in the CLA and scholarships for students who take unpaid internships. Uh, what are some trends in the communications and media career field or upcoming changes that you foresee? Garrett, I'm gonna start with you. What do you see as the changes? Um, I think one of the bigger changes that we've seen, you know, I'd say in the past decade, but it keeps going is that we're just shifting a lot more into just our online platforms, you know, how are we connecting in ways to, you know, the people around us in ways that maybe we haven't done so much. And I know from like a government standpoint, you know, that is us stepping onto things like Facebook and Twitter, which I know for some people are like, oh, that's really archaic. And <laughs> those are older platforms. Um, and so it's a little bit slow moving here and, you know, in other industries the same way, but we just see that more of just kind of this relevance of getting our message out and getting our message out broadly and learning to utilize different platforms that might have different audiences and just making sure that we're, you know, making sure we're hitting all of those because, you know, different people are going to be using different platforms depending on where they're at in life. So we want to make sure that we're reaching everyone and that we're not missing anyone. Um, so I think that technological advancement is always going to be something that we need to always keep in our forefront because things are always going to be changing. You know, how many platforms did we utilize that we didn't utilize five years ago? So I think it's just something to always know that, you know, once again, that flexibility and adaptability is going to be key as we work into that. Um, so some things will never change, but, you know, within that, you also will see those, those new, uh, new horizons opening up for us to kind of be the people that can walk into and say, hey, how are we going to communicate our message effectively now in this area? What's going to be the main point that we want to make for that? Excellent. Thank you very much, Garrett. Marguerite, something you'd like to 
uh, mention as trends? I would say speed is constantly a trend that we're evolving to. Everything is becoming more quick turn, I would say by the quarter here. Um, if you can be really adaptable and really agile, um, that's gonna benefit you well. Um, I think that people are used to fast reacting communications and media and advertising, and we need to be able to deliver that. Thank you. Jack? Yeah, I think I definitely agree with those two. I feel like they have, things have gotten significantly faster and have had to be pushed out to a bunch of different platforms for sure. Um, I think one thing to remind ourselves during that kind of speed and during that kind of, you know, platform agnosticism a little bit is like, you have to make sure that your voice is the foundational pieces are still there. Your voice has to be really strong because there are, there's so much noise and there's so many platforms and there's so much stuff out there. Everyone's fighting for smaller and smaller shares. I think your voice, your brand, your message, whatever it is, has to be even stronger now because there's so much out there. Um, I think it's kind of foundational level stuff. It comes back to like that, that brand has to be rock solid. Um, and I think it's even more important to have, you know, the kind of CLA foundation stuff that we had in school. Um, definitely more than ever because there's so much speed because there's so many platforms to go out to for sure. Excellent, thank you, Connor. So I, I'm currently in kind of the CRM uh, wing of, of advertising right now. And, and what we have is uh, what we call a MarTech stack that every almost every single year it evolves and it grows and it grows and it grows and it grows. And we consult with clients on how all those pieces come together to eventually give a one-to-one -one personalized communication. So I think personalized communication is, is obviously where a lot of things are going, especially in the digital realm, right? Instead of mass shooting out messages, it's, hey, I know Connor McCarthy. I know what he did. I know when he did it, how he did it, which then goes into the privacy uh, issues, right? And you'll see Apple or Google or some of the big players out there rolling out new privacy um, stances. And so those then obviously trickle down to our clients and the, the tactics that we utilize to reach customers and to personalize communications for them. So there's a, there's a heavy balance between, hey, I want to give you the right information at the right time. And hey, this is creepy. You know too much about me. And so that's a trend that's, that's constantly uh, moving. And so having that kind of business acumen and understanding what's going on from a greater picture and how that trickles down and affects what you and your clients are doing, um, that's going to keep you on what we say is, you know, kind of the cutting edge and, and making sure that your clients feel like, hey, I have a trusted partner um, that that's make, that's staying two, two feet in front of us at every time. Excellent. Thank you very, very much. Now, the last question that I was going to ask was, what are the hiring trends and timelines for this career field? But I'm going to change that a bit. And I'm going to ask you, what impact do you think the pandemic has had and the Zoom environment has had? in the communications and media field. Anyone who would like to raise their hand can try that one first. I'm not gonna put you on, okay, Garrett. I'll do it because we just utilized uh, Zoom a lot more than we ever had. I mean, in essence, the pandemic kind of caused us to move quickly in terms that, you know, would have taken years for us to kind of move and gravitate in towards, you know, and I'm talking more like, like some of our programs where, there was always that idea of putting trainings or putting meetings online, but it was something that was not necessarily a priority. So then it would always get pushed to the back burner. Um, and then the pandemic happened and it was like, hey, this is actually not a priority. We have to move quickly on that. Um, so some doors that were slowly opening opened very quickly, which was really beneficial for some of my programming and some of what I do at the county. So that was, you know, kind of a silver lining in between that um, as well. But I think in some ways it's kind of a um, double-edged sword in the sense that with this new era that we're in and with technology being um, just kind of at the forefront and communication being at the forefront, I think it's great for us in our field because it opens up many doors for us to kind of be utilized and bring our expertise to. But at the same time, now it kind of um, also brings other people um, that might be a little bit more competitive in terms of where we're at. Um, in the same way that we would see um, with cell phones getting the way that they are with video and pictures being as great as it were, we kind of saw that be a negative impact on some news media where instead of having to hire all these reporters who would go out in the field and gather the news, you didn't really need that as much anymore because now you have everyone that has a video camera on their phone 
you can have somebody write down wherever something's happening, taking pictures and video right at that moment where you don't necessarily need to send a news anchor down to that platform. So it's a little bit of a balance and a little bit of give and take, but I think it does kind of expand kind of what we do and our platform a little bit more. Excellent. Anybody else care to add before we go to questions from the audience? I can Jack. jump in and yeah, I'll say, I think Garrett's totally right that um, anyone that was sort of holding out on Zoom or making things uh, flexible with online meetings, even online webinars. Um, I know we hosted a webinar in October of last year, which we had been talking about filming for a long time. And this was kind of the last thing that we needed to reallocate some yeah, priorities is a good way of putting it. Like we'd always talked about it, but this was the last thing that we needed. I think that um, really pushed it over the edge. So the stragglers, uh, you know, were sort of forced into this, um, but I think it could be, it, it can be a really powerful and awesome thing for us to do. Um, just like having this meeting, it's it's fairly easy for all of us to jump on Zoom and, and have a quick chat. And this can now be used for so many other things. So I think it's it's cool. Excellent, thank you. Any other closing comments before we go to questions? Marguerite? I think I'm ready for the student questions. I wanna see okay. what they're thinking about. <laughs> okay, Connor? Okay. Bring on the questions. Yep. Okay. Beth, should we see if there are questions? There are no questions submitted so far. So John uh, and panelists, you can end as you choose. I will share my screen and give the panelists information again. Excellent. Excellent. Well, um, again, thank you very, very much for joining us today in the communications and media career field. Just a general reminder to everybody who's observing that we do have our CLA internship and career fair tomorrow. It's a virtual fair from uh, 10 until 3. The last count was 63 employers. Beth, is there more information than those 63? Yeah, we're up to 71, John. 71, fantastic. 71 people, 71 companies who want to talk to CLA students about internships and about job opportunities, some of which are available now, some will be available in the spring and some for next summer. So hopefully you will all be able to join us for that. At this point, I'm going to thank Jack, I'm gonna thank Marguerite, I'm gonna thank Garrett, I'm gonna thank Connor, and I'm really gonna thank Beth, who was our <laughs> Rebecca behind the scenes person and who salvaged this whole thing. And also, did a tremendous amount of orchestration. Beth is part of our employer engagement team and heads that operation and is the one who uh, solicited our four participants today. Everybody have a wonderful day and we will log off. Thank you all. Thanks everybody. Bye. Thank you. Take care, Thank you. Go, go first. <laughs>